I'm Luke Woodward. Uh, I am an engineering manager at TenUp, and I'm going to talk to you guys about robots writing your documentation for you. It's really exciting. But before we get into that, I have a confession for you all. I don't like the codex. Cue the hate mail. But for some things, it just doesn't really fit the bill of what we need it to be. For technical documentation in particular, the codex doesn't really do what I want it to do. So this friendly thing that I'm used to seeing just hasn't cut it for several years now. Uh, as long as I'm going down the well-treaded path, the happy path, where everybody else has gone before me, I'm okay. Things like WP Query, yeah, it does a pretty good job at that, but as soon as I take that path less traveled by, all of a sudden things get a little bit dicey. It's a little outdated. It's vague most of the time, or worse yet, it's not even there. There is no page to tell me how I'm supposed to use this obscure piece of WordPress core. So for technical documentation, the codex just doesn't cut it for me. Okay, Luke, you say, if I don't use the codex, what am I supposed to use? I would tell you to use the WordPress code reference. You're gonna find that over at developer.wordpress.org slash reference. And if you have not used this before and you write WordPress code, start using it. It will change your life. I'm serious. This thing is awesome. It gives you access to documentation on every single WordPress function, every single WordPress hook. I have at least one tab, usually five or six open anytime I'm writing code to the developer reference. So if you have not started using this, start. I'm going to tell you a little story about how this thing came to exist. 2013, about 10 members of the WordPress docs team met and they decided that the codex was completely unmaintainable. They just couldn't keep up with what was required and so they figured they needed to change something. They created a massive roadmap to come up with something that was better. Part of this roadmap was creating internal documentation standards. They came up with the idea of DevHub, a website to organize and display all of this thing, all of the things that they were creating. They came up with the idea of developer handbooks. These are in-depth conversations and discussions and documentation on specific topics. Uh, and then they came up with this thing called the WP Parser. The WP parser is what created the code reference for us. It is an incredibly smart robot which reads through all of WordPress core, pulls out all of the information that's already there, and puts it into the code reference. So when you're using developer.wordpress.org slash reference, you're actually using the product of the WP parser. So what is it? What is this smart robot that they created? It's a WordPress plugin. That means you can go install it today. You're going to find it on the WordPress org uh, on their GitHub. Uh, so you can go download this thing, uh, install it on your site, and have it read through code for you. Uh, but it's a little bit more than just the WordPress core code. It will actually read any WordPress code, any WordPress style code that you want to throw at it. So functions, plugins, anybody written any of those? You can send the parser at that code and come out the other side with a documentation website similar to the code reference for your code. It doesn't just stop at WordPress core. This is amazing stuff. It's really fun to do. I decided to try it on something that I had never really used before, but I knew it was pretty well known within our community. So I threw it at easy digital downloads. I just downloaded EDD from GitHub and ran the parser on it. This is what came out the other end. Uh, so it's formatted fairly nicely, but it gave me all of the different functions from EDD. It gave me parameters, return values, descriptions, scrolling down the page a little bit. I have direct view into the source code for that function. I have the beginnings of a change log. All of this fairly rich information about easy digital downloads code. All I had to do was tell the parser, hey, go look at that code, tell me about it. And all of a sudden, out the other side, I have this wonderful documentation website. So. How does this thing work? Well, remember, part of that roadmap was creating WordPress internal documentation standards. Uh, these internal documentation standards made it so that it was a very consistent set of documentation that happened inside of WordPress core. And for that matter, the extension WordPress code in general. So if you get to know these documentation standards, the parser is going to be able to do a much better job at reading your code and giving you a documentation website on the other side. 
Uh, so get to know it. If you haven't read the internal doc standard, go read it. Uh, it uses this thing called PHP doc, uh, which is uh, maintained by a group called PHP Documenter. You can find it on the PHP Documenter website. Uh, but the doc standards tell us we should document these things. Functions and class methods, classes, class properties, requires and includes, hooks, actions and filters, file constants, file headers and constants. That's, that's a lot. So if you're not used to documenting your code, that's a lot to get going with. If you need a place to start that's a little bit smaller than that, start with just your functions and class methods and your classes. At least get those down. That'll give you a pretty good basis. If you can do a little bit more, anytime you add a custom action or custom filter, document that as well. So get to know these things, but if you have to start smaller, functions and class methods, classes, and hooks. Document those things at least, and then start as you get used to it, get into some of these other topics. If you've never seen a doc block before, this is what one looks like. It's nothing special, it's just a comment that appears directly above the thing that you are trying to document. So in this case, we're documenting a function called do awesome. We know it's a doc block because it starts with slash star star. That second star says, hey, I'm a doc block, I'm intended for a robot to read. Uh, the first line after that is gonna be your one line summary. This is a very brief, hey, this is what this thing does in a single line. After that, you can go nuts. This is your description area. You can have as many paragraphs as you want. You write it in Markdown in this area, and that will get pulled out and have a much larger piece of content really in depth explaining what you're trying to do. And then you can add additional data below that in the form of uh, PHP doc tags. So it's gonna be your parameter documentation, your return documentation. Again, going back to those internal doc standards, it'll tell you which one of these to use, how to use them, when to use them, and why. So get to know that and it will help you because there are a ton of these things on PHP Documenter. So narrow that down by looking at the doc standards. As you write doc blocks, I can promise you three things will happen. You're gonna get in the habit and it's gonna get a lot easier because you'll get used to it. Next time you look at your code in six months, you're gonna open that file and these doc blocks are going to start reminding you what you were doing. So you're gonna be able to jump into it much faster. And finally, your code's gonna get better. You're gonna to have to explain what you're doing in plain English. And when you have to do that, it forces you to think about it in a very different way. So you're actually gonna write better code. This is really the beginning of what the parser's going to do. It's gonna to continue to get better and improve. It's going to understand lots more types of documentation. Right now, it only understands a handful of those things I listed. It'll understand all eventually. There's probably gonna be better ways to group things, things like the HTTP API that Ryan was talking about. Right now, that's not well grouped. That'll probably show up. Uh, this is a great place for WordPress contribution. Uh, docs are a place that oftentimes a lot of people don't think of but Drew's a little lonely over in the docs world, so go give him some help and start contributing with some docs. Uh, finally, JS Doc 3. We just recently, in WordPress, adopted JS Doc 3 as our doc standard for JavaScript. It's very possible that in the future, this is also gonna be pulled out in some way and added to DevHub. So get to know JS Doc 3. I have been working a lot on this. I, it's not quite ready, but I'm creating a set of tools that I want to give to everybody. Uh, I'll release them as a form of open source, so the theme that you actually saw EDD in is part of this. Uh, a couple of plugins for helping you deal with this documented code. It's nothing scary. This stuff actually comes out as custom post types and WordPress taxonomies. We build our doc site in WordPress. It's stuff we're comfortable with. But the WP Documenter stuff that I am building is going to give you a couple of extra tools to make it easier to display stuff. Finally, if you have further questions, look up these resources. I tweeted out my uh, link to my slides earlier. Uh, but other than that, thank you for letting me talk to you about robots writing your docs.